Welcome to Scenics where you get to know the best movies and series. Today's video is about top 10 best ninja movies ever made. I hope you enjoy this video. Be sure to watch until the end. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. The Killer Elite 1975, one of the greatest action filmmakers of all time, made a ninja movie with James Caan, Robert Duvall and Burt Young. For action junkies it sounds too good to be true. And unfortunately it is. This fairly by the numbers thriller about a team of veteran mercenaries protecting a Japanese diplomat doesn't rate as one of the legendary tough guy director's best and isn't a particularly enthralling ninja feature, but it's a solid movie and a landmark for ninja fans is one of the first mainstream American feature films to give the Shadow Assassins a realistic presentation albeit one confined mostly to the extended shipyard brawl finale. Viewed today it's more of a curiosity item, a chance for martial arts fans to see ninja presented in Peckinpah's more grounded western style, though some may be disappointed to discover that when killer elites ninja do finally make their appearance, they don't exactly rate the proper respect from the main cast. Shinobi Heart Under Blade 2005 Believe it or not, Japanese pop culture remains less consistently fascinated with ninja than the West, and especially neighboring China, but the subject enjoys intermittent bouts of public fascination, particularly in the realm of manga, anime, and historical fantasy novels. Shinobi Heart Under Blade is an adaptation of one such novel, Futaro Yamada's The Koga Ninja Scrolls, a fictionalized dramatization of a feud between the Koga and Iga clans at the dawn of the Tokugawa Shogunate that also served as the basis for the anime series Basilisk. It's Romeo and Juliet with ninjas. Male and female heirs to the Koga and Iga leadership are plotting to hook up and unify their clans, an event that Shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu believes could create an army powerful enough to challenge his rule because of a prevalence of superhuman ninja abilities in both clans. Ninja Terminator 1985, the aforementioned Godfrey Ho has at least 115 known films to his credit, so don't be too surprised to see him turn up on this list twice. Ninja Terminator is often regarded as Ho's best ninja movie and is certainly the most quintessential, as it features some of the best action the most coherent storyline and the presence of B-movie star Richard Harrison often thought of as the Godfrey Ho ninja actor. Harrison, a veteran of the gladiator and spaghetti western genres who once joked that his greatest contribution to cinema was turning down a fistful of dollars and recommending Clint Eastwood for the role instead, was paid to shoot what he thought was a small number of ninja movies for Ho while working in Hong Kong. Pray for Death 1985 When low-budget ninja movies were at peak popularity in the US, Japanese actor and martial artist Sho Kasugi shot to B-movie stardom on the basis of memorable appearances in canon films so-called Ninja Trilogy and being a real-life ninja. In as much as he's reputed to have extensively studied ninjutsu along with karate, kendo, judo, iaido, kabuto and aikido. He also had on-screen charisma to spare, and got to demonstrate it in Pray for Death one of the rare American martial arts films of the era that placed Asian characters at the center of their own story. The plot is fairly boilerplate, with Kasugi set as a Japanese family man who moves his family to the US so that his American-born wife can open a restaurant. He is then forced to break out his ninja skills to defend said family from corrupt cops and local crime lords. Ninja 3 The Domination 1984 canon films followed their money-making B-grade ninja hits Enter the Ninja and Revenge of the Ninja with this third spiritual sequel in a series unified only by the presence of Sho Kasugi in supporting roles. This is the strangest of the three, and therefore widely considered to be the best of the lot. A bizarre mashup of ninja and exorcist movie tropes, the plot concerns a woman who becomes possessed by the spirit of a dead ninja, which forces her to commit martial arts murders against her will. James Hong tries to help as a Chinese exorcist but the task of setting things right ultimately falls to Kasugi, as a good ninja who can expel the evil through a ritual fair duel. 007 You Only Live Twice 1967, one of the all-time great ninja-centric action movies and easily one of the best original James Bond films, if you can manage to look past all the incredibly uncomfortable racism which is easier said than done in a film whose central plot element is that Sean Connery can become Japanese with some skin-darkening makeup and black hair dye. Too bad, since it features the best Bond, the best Bond villain, the best Bond villain lair and the best Bond finale action sequence, with 007 leading an army of ninja to storm the volcano base. It even has one of the sharpest screenplays of the Connery era, thanks to Roald Dahl on adaptation duties. Too bad the film's second act is so profoundly uncomfortable. Ninja Shadow of a Terror 2013 Scott Adkins is the most dynamic Western martial arts star working on the B-movie scene today, beloved by fans of hardcore action for the two undisputed sequels and Universal Soldier The Reckoning. 
But while the original Ninja was a largely forgettable affair outside of Adkins bone-crushing fight scenes, Ninja Shadow of a Terror is a bona fide ninja classic, directed by Isaac Florentine, an Israeli-born action specialist who cut his teeth as one of the principal directors and fight choreographers for the original Power Rangers series from the Mighty Morphin to Lightspeed Rescue eras, Shadow of a Terror is a revenge story that exists entirely to set up eye-poppingly violent, flawlessly choreographed ninja fight sequences showing off Adkins' impressive physicality. Lone Wolf and Cub Sword of Vengeance 1972, alternately known as the Baby Cart series, one of the most famous samurai movie franchises of all time began with this film, which features Ninja as primary antagonists and inspired the graphic novel Road to Perdition. The story Agami Ito, the Shogun's head executioner, is conspired against by rival Ritsudo Yagyu, master of the Shogun's personal ninja assassination squad. When his wife is murdered, Ito goes on the run and becomes a ronin for hire, taking his infant son Degoro with him via a specially outfitted baby carriage that's armored, bulletproof and equipped with hidden weapons that both father and son can trigger. Together, they travel feudal Japan taking on soldier of fortune work and fending off continued assault by the Yagyu ninja clan. The Five Element Ninjas 1982, Chong Che, the godfather of Hong Kong cinema, directed some 100 films in his day, and is regarded as one of the most important filmmakers in the martial arts genre, if not the entire history of Chinese filmmaking, via classics like The Five Deadly Venoms, Crippled Avengers, The Water Margin and others, and in The Five Element Ninjas, he helped solidify a template from which almost all subsequent ninja films would draw. When the master of a Chinese martial arts school kills a Japanese rival in combat, his students find themselves stalked by a quintet of revenge-seeking ninja teams whose attacks and fighting techniques are based on the elements of water, fire, earth, wood and gold. Often cited with popularizing the color-coded ninja visual gimmick, the wide variety of weapons and styles helped Che deliver among his most impressive action sequences including a bravura 20-minute final stretch in which the Kung Fu students take down all five elemental teams with a flurry of new weapon techniques that has to experience to be believed. Duel to the Death 1983, Ching Su Tung was an action choreographer in Hong Kong martial arts films for over a decade before he set out to direct a film of his own. The result was an explosion of fresh ideas and audacious new techniques that divided genre critics, audiences and other filmmakers at the time, but is widely seen today as the beginning of Hong Kong action cinema's transition from the Shaw Brothers' golden age and the modern era that would birth international superstars like Jackie Chan, Jet Li and filmmakers like John Woo ramping up the formerly taboo bloodshed and sexuality while eschewing studio-bound settings for naturalistic camerawork and on-location exterior shooting. But more importantly for our purposes, it reshaped the way ninja were presented in the genre for decades. Color-coded uniforms were out, black PJs were back and small teams were replaced by a surplus of infinitely renewing foot soldiers swarming over action scenes like human fire ants and that was just the beginning. 